I don't think I've ever had as much fun playing a character as I have Vincent Moore. Vincent is um, uh, he's an Australian, nice to use my own accent. Um, <clears throat> soldier first, engineer, weapons designer, who's come to Tetraval here with a product um, that uh, is called the Moose. And the Moose is, is a robot that is very overarmed and overgeared in every way, and some would argue uh, overpriced, but uh, not Vincent. Um, Vincent's very proud of it. He's, some, he's an all or nothing kind of guy. Yes, he's a villain, in that his own needs and wants and desires actually drive way beyond his philosophy. And his inability to lose actually just trumps everything and he becomes someone very destructive and he becomes someone very angry and vengeful and as the audience fall more and more in love with Chappie, he becomes more and more hateful of him. So the audience definitely will see him as a villain, but I still think, and I, I love the way Neil, because it was his invention, putting in the, the religious aspect of it, gives him a very true motivation. Shalto is, an incredible improviser, an incredibly curious, passionate, energetic man, and a wonderful, wonderful actor. His commitment to his roles, whether he's in a grey suit or not, is extraordinary. It's inspiring. He's, I think he's one of the best actors out there. Um, the, the, the job he did on District 9, the job he did on Elysium were outstanding. Um, he makes unpredictable choices. He's always got a sense of danger about him. There's always a sense of fun, even if he's playing a villain. There's, it's alive, and I love to watch him on screen. What a joy to work with someone like Neil, because he's 10 steps ahead of the visual effects department. Now, often on a set, um, and I'm not gonna say which one, you will often find the director just really confused about what's going on or how to make his vision come to life. That for Neil is not an issue. And actually, even though this is gonna be stunning and there's a lot of visual effects, it almost feels like you're not on a visual effects movie. It really, because he just knows how to make it very simple. Um, he knows how to make it easy for the actors. Uh, it's almost like he's been an actor himself. It feels very um, pared down in a way, actually. He knows what he needs, and he doesn't waste time on getting stuff he doesn't need. I've worked on a lot of special effects films, and I've never been in a situation where the person who's going to be transformed into a visual effect completely is actually just acting. Yes, they're wearing a grey suit, but in some way, having someone like Charles over there, is so genius and I think the design of the actual scout robot, the fact that it's about the same height as him, means he doesn't have to wear stilts, he doesn't have to hold a stick with a tennis ball on top of, you know, it feels very real. There's not a moment actually where I, it doesn't feel like normal acting. Hey, what's happening movie fans? I've got an interesting movie fact for all you Fast and Furious fans out there. Even if you are not, you can still stay tuned. Now, did you know that Michelle Rodriguez, who plays Letty, did not have a driver's license before she began filming for the first movie of the series? Hmm, interesting. So I wonder which one of the team taught her to drive. Who would be your choice of driving instructor? Let us know in the comments below. That's all for today. I'm Valerie and remember, don't bark if you can't bite. See ya!